so good to be in the house of the Lord once again. Let's sing a song he promised to hold my hand. Aren't you glad he's holding your hand through it all in life's journey? He promised to hold my hand. He promised to help me stand when the valley's too low and the river's too wide. He promised he would lead me to the other side. His promise is life my you glad you can stand on every promise of our Lord this morning. Let revival come. Let revival come. Amen. Let's have church this morning. What a wonderful time in the Lord last night. We're expecting greater things even today. Amen. Oh, heavenly Father, I come. Don't have much to offer, Holy One. Humbled by all that you've done Even though I walk through the valley I don't have to fear You would call me from the start So glad I have you What more could I want? So raise my faith a little higher Set my spirit on fire
this morning. Won't you give him a hand clap of praise this morning? He's worthy of all of it. Amen. He's the greatest love story we know of, isn't he? Amen. I left a barren land searching for rest Stumbling round in amnesia, bitterness and distress. But then I met the kinsman redeemer, who's called the mighty one. He took this old Moabite from the field to bring me to his house. He said, fear not my child. Oh, for you are part of me, and I'm not a rest. You are at my side, and I will do all that you ask of me. Responded to your call, and you have covered me, Lord. With eyes of faith, I see all the mysteries being revealed, and now I see oh, who I am, and I lay claim to all that's mine. The lion, the lamb's wife. I've been bought with the price. He said, Fear not, my child. Oh, for you are a part of me, and I'm not a rest. Till you are at my side, and I will do all that you. second 
verse again, I responded to the call. Well, I responded to your call, and you have covered me. Lord, with eyes of faith I see all the mysteries be revealed. Now I see all who I am, and I lay claim to all that's mine. Well, I am the Lamb's request at this time this morning. I want to continue to lift up our brother Donnie Nicholson in prayer as he's in a lot of pain. Also our sister Erica Parker, brother Donnie Reagan's daughter there in that church. I want to continue to lift up our pastor, brother Ron Spencer, that God would just touch him and heal him this morning. Also our sister Betty Morris, she's fighting that kidney disease. Also want to continue to pray for our brother Bill Hinkle, and then also want to continue to lift up our sister Sue Lambert in prayer that God would just continue to heal her leg there and her foot. Uh, uh, this morning, uh, a waitress in the hotel lobby asked if I was going to church. Uh, her name is Pauletta. She asked if we could call her name in prayer this morning. Thank you, Brother Marcus. I want to be remembering that need there and what she would have there. Amen. Dear church family, Please pray for my cousin, Tommy Morris. The doctors say he has liver cancer. Thank you, Sister Ruth Ann Shiflett. So just be remembering Brother Tommy Morris there. 
that God would touch him. Please pray for my aunt's husband, Bill Benz. He has leukemia and is having a rough time. Thank you, Brother Denny Vance. Amen. How many will have an unspoken request you'd like to raise up before the Lord this morning? Amen. I'm going to ask our brother Shannon Shiflett, he would just come and pray over these needs for us. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we are thankful this morning, Lord, to come and gather on this beautiful morning that Thy hand has created. Lord, with brothers and sisters of like faith to come here to worship You, Lord, to praise You, Father. And there's a burning in our hearts this morning, Lord, as we gather with great anticipation, O Lord, for what You have to speak to us, Father. For Your words are life, Oh, God, they bring us joy. It's in thy presence, Lord, that our joys are made full. And at thy right hand, oh, God, our promises, Lord. Lord, we lift these needs this morning up to you, oh, Lord. Father, loved ones, brothers and sisters and family, Lord, that we're in need, Lord, for you to come by their way. So we call on the great physician this morning, oh, God, the one who heals cancer, Lord, the one who mends broken hearts, the one who restores families, Lord, that's been torn apart. We call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, for it's a name above all names. And, Lord, we ask that you would move. Lord, go by each one's way, Lord. Liver cancer, may it be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, give strength to the weak this morning, oh God. Father, we love you. We lift you up on high. We praise you, oh Lord, for the love in our heart, oh God. May it touch you this day, Lord. And may it move you with compassion, O God, that you would let the Holy Spirit just rain down upon us today. Saturate us, Lord. Strengthen us, O God, for the week ahead, Lord. We pray that you would lift and guide our steps, Lord, every step of the way. Lord, be with us, O God. Leave us not alone, O Lord. I don't want to know a minute in my life without you, Father. Lord, we love you. We pray that you would speak to us today, O God. Lord, that you would anoint Brother Ron as he brings forth the word today, Lord. And Father, may it just be as the ones on the road to Emmaus. As the word is spoken, may our hearts burn within us. Oh God, and realize that there's more than just a man up here speaking. Speak to us, Lord, to the secrets in our heart. Oh Lord, you know the needs that we have. Under every hand that lifts up, Father, there is a heart with a need. Oh God, we love you. We give you praise and glory this morning. I ask that you have your will and way here, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 This morning we'll receive this this morning's offering. You give as God's blessed you. Glad to have Brother Marcus and his wife here with us this morning. I'm going to ask Brother Marcus to come sing for us if you would. And after Brother Marcus, may Brother Stephen be prepared to sing for us after him. Amen. After you've given, you can be seated this morning. In this age of confusion, there's disillusion everywhere. And it's hard to find true peace of mind and someone who really cares. But I put my trust in Jesus. He's like no other friend I know. Oh, his word is true. He'll see me through. And I believe Jesus. Oh, and I believe. Oh, Jesus saves. And I believe a crown of life awaits beyond the grave. And I believe the saints that pray that a prayer heart of God I believe the old time way 
plan and I believe Jesus Lord and I believe Lord you say and I believe a crown of life waits me on that grave and I believe the path saints have tried that a prayer it'll move the heart of our God I believe the old time way oh I believe Jesus
Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. As Brother Ron gets ready to come sing his song this morning. was just a shepherd boy without a shield without a sword fed up with the giant's voice screaming curses to the Lord I walked down that hill alone with a pocket full of river stones but what that Philistine couldn't see is what I had was more than me see on my own I'm weak, but my God fights for me. I was servant to the king, interpreting his crazy dreams. I won't worship mortal men, so they threw me in the lion's den. Vicious teeth were all I saw Till some came and shut their jaws You couldn't find a scratch on me In fact, that night I fell asleep When morning came, it shocked them all Cause my God fights for me Oh, yes, he does Trapped and can't get out 
or are you staring down a lion's mouth? Can you stand before the Lord, or do you need to hit the floor? It doesn't matter what you've done, because the battle is already won. So lift your voice with me and sing, and my in the house. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, let's have church. We got here, we might as well have church. Hallelujah. You may have fought through a lot of things to get here, but let's have church. Hallelujah. Boo devil. You couldn't stop us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't he good to us? So good to have each and every one of you with us today. And Amen. God bless you for being here with us. And we love you with all of our hearts. So good to see each and every one of you. Amen. Isn't he good? Sister, Sister Linda, good to see you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Glad to have Sister Nancy back today. She was feeling a little rough yesterday. Back this morning. Amen. We're certainly privileged for that. Thank you for your prayers for the meeting at Brother Kelly Hildebrandt's. It went wonderful. We wasn't expecting any different. I believe it was the best meeting that we've ever had there. It just tells us that we're getting closer to the coming of the Lord. And so, amen. We'd like for you to remember us this week. We're going to Brother Tim Pruitt's for his meeting. I think some of you are going with us. And, and so pray for us as we would make our journey there. Uh, many of you are flying. Some of you are driving. Sister Connie and I actually will be leaving out and, and uh, going going to a ribbon cutting contest, a ribbon cutting ceremony. Forgive me, Brother Derek, <laughs> for his coffee shop uh, on Wednesday morning. That's just a godsend. The whole whole thing's a miracle, and so we're just praying that that goes well. That town actually, Minden actually supports St. Jude's Cancer. Uh, um, for about a million dollars a year, and they've asked me to be the speaker. So, so we, we just so not only we're we going to speak in a meeting, we're going to have coffee. So, and a honey bun. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 
for now, it's just an extra shot. So that's what you do. You just take an extra shot for it. So would like to report to you had three different letters come in this week and uh, we uh, just, I didn't bring them with me, but uh, a sister and a brother from, from Edmonton in the prayer line uh, at Edmonton meetings. Uh, one was healed with lung cancer, totally healed, totally gone, 100% gone. And, uh, there, was a mar- there was a marriage that was restored there, and, and that's, that's a miracle too, and so, and then uh, we just thank the Lord for that. At Brother Josh Bennett's meeting, there was, uh, I'm sorry to drop these all in, but I just got them this week, but Sister Carol Tester was dying with cancer, and um, she was just literally dying with cancer, and so Brother Josh asked me to pray for her, and so I I felt led to bring her up before I preached, and so we brought her up before we preached and prayed for her. We know God's the healer. We just lay hands on the sick and believe and expect God to do what he said he would do. And uh, she got a report totally cancer-free. So we thank God for that. Thank God for that. Amen. Amen. When I get my report, we're going to we're not going to preach. We're just going to shout for about three or four hours, and we're, yeah, we're just going to shout. Sister Connie sat with us in the office the other day with the doctors, and so we just was talking about the next phase of the journey, and they were talking about hospice, and I was thinking about going home, so, you know, that's what we're thinking about, so isn't God good? Amen, and so we just love him with all of our hearts, and so would ask you to pray for us, and that God would give us strength, and and wow, I love these songs today, and so... Amen. Amen. Maybe you can sing that again after I get done. Amen. And I'll, I'll shout with you. So, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming ready for church today. <clears throat> I didn't know what you guys were going to sing, but I'm speaking today on walking with him in this journey. Amen. If you will turn with me to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10. So glad to have you in the house of the Lord. Last night was awesome here. Amen. This, I, just, I just really enjoyed that last night. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 10. Amen. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. I hope I read that in such a way that Satan heard it. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. Turn with me to Revelations 19 and verse 6. I want to read a few portions of scriptures about you today. That one was about you and this one is about you as well. And I heard as it were a voice of a great multitude and a voice of many waters. And the voice of mighty thundering saying hallelujah for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, white and clean, for the fine linen is a righteous unto the saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. You may be seated. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. 
Revelations 21 and verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Right here, I'd just like to just pause just for a moment if maybe you read it this week, but Benjamin Netanyahu, who is the, who is the leader of, of Israel, he actually came and spoke at our, at our Congress and addressed the Congress, and it felt like it was like Joshua standing before our Hall of Congress uh, speaking to them of prophetic times. This week, he spoke before the U.N., Reminding us that we're on the, the brink of the end and how that the AI technology is, is so dangerous. And, of course, they know it in a different level, how that there will be wars like no other war take place. And I thought, he must be reading the message of the hour. Thought it was significant that he was the one that was speaking that. Not just other world leaders were saying it, but... He was a leader that was standing there knowing that there's a war that is coming their way. A war called Armageddon. It's getting ready to happen. And, and we realize that, that this heaven and this earth will pass away. Last night said that as, as Brother Andrew was speaking, he said, heavens and earth will pass away. But my words will never pass away. So we're not making plans to stay here. This is not the dimension that we want to stay. Notice what he says. And I, John, saw the holy city of New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard as if it was a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. We could pause right there and shout for the rest of the day. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. And he that overcometh, here we are. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. If I could just drop just a thought right here, there was a time where Ruth was gleaning in the field. But she was getting ready to be the owner of the field. The season that you're in might be difficult for you right now. But you are the queen of heaven. Turn to your neighbor and say, we are the queen of heaven. Our time here is allotted on earth. If you live to be 100 years old, it's only just a brief passage. Yesterday for us that's got some gray in our hair, some of us has got more gray than others, but it feels like yesterday we were boys, little girls playing. My, and just a thought here, when I was a little boy, the first vision that I had was at seven years old. And I was sitting on a rock. It was in my dad's. It was on the top of a boulder that was sitting in our in my, um, yard that I grew up in. And I was sitting on that rock, and it was, it was the, the, the sun was warm, and I was sitting there just enjoying the day, and I had my first vision. Of course, I didn't understand how it all worked. I just saw it, and I ran into the house and told Dad that I was getting ready to get a horse. He asked me what color it was and how it was made up, and he wanted to hear all the details of it. And it was a short time later that he, he had decided, I'm going to get you a horse, and 
Mark, if he's listening, will hear these things. And so we, we went to a man named Mr. Altizer. Mr. Altizer was, had, had pinto horses. And, and for Stephanie, you know what they are. They're beautiful animals. They make good cutting horses, good cattle horses, and good running horses. And so anyway, the horse that I saw was standing in his field. Dad took that, bought that horse, and it bought it for just literally nothing. And the, he told Mr. Altizer about the vision. Mr. Altizer wanted to be a part of all of that. And so he was a great man. And so we got the horse. Dad broke it. We rode it and rode it for many years. And there was a man stopped and said, I want that horse. And he gave Dad multiple times what that horse, we had paid for it. That horse became the champion of the horse shows in Florida. So it had something in it. Amen. Saying all that to say this to you, God seen something in you. That so many of you didn't see in yourself. And you see as life is just a vapor and we're just going through. Sometimes we don't find our purpose until God speaks to us and then when he ignites that purpose in our life, we begin to walk with God and talk with God. And, and we realize that we can't even guide ourselves. There's times that we're walking in the darkness and, and it just seems like that it's just, it's just chaos all around us. And who's holding on to us? Am I holding on? Let me, let me just say this to you. So many times we think, I can't hold on anymore, but we got to realize we're not the one holding on to start off with. And when he comes by, when he steps by on a certain day, you'll never forget that day. And you just want to capture the moment, absorb everything a part of it, how it feels, what it sounds like to hear the voice of the Lord echoing. Where did it come from? Did it come from inside of you? Or did you hear it audible? All you know, it was him. You begin to follow him and you begin to watch. Even our messenger had to meet the angel of the Lord in a cave. And God would give him his commission of what he would do. Just like a candlestick would be placed in, the, in a generation. And he delivers the message. That message comes down from the glory of God. Now it will go throughout the earth and begin to deliver a message to a people. I'm going to have a bride. She'll be without spot or wrinkle. Come out of her, my people, and be not a partaker of her plagues. And you're marrying Jesus Christ. Not the man William Branham, but you're marrying Jesus Christ. Before long, you begin to realize that God is developing a, a picture. A picture of what he thought of before the foundation of the world. And you're a part of it. The mystery of Jesus Christ, the mystery of it was you. That's the real mystery. That's the hidden secret that he held inside of himself was you, was on his mind. Or let me just say this, you Satan would have never took his life. Because you are raised to torment his kingdom. Now you're here. And God's at work with you. None of us are finished. But God's taking his master brush. Sister Connie is taking his master brush and he's brushing one day at a time. Let me just say this to you. Sometimes we don't, we don't understand what to, the reason today holds. But God's got a greater purpose in your life. He's got a greater purpose. And I want you to understand that you are God's crowning achievement. He, he built all the animals to fellowship with. But he couldn't have a level of fellowship like he's having with you right now. So he'll come maybe to your bedroom, to your work site. He'll come in a service. And there may be hundreds of people sitting in the service. But he'll make it so personal, it'll feel like he's talking to you. 
He begins to describe to you that, that your, your identification is not from your mom and dad. It's not from the history of your, your family tree. That was your fleshly DNA. But he's got a, a, a higher achievement that he wants for you. He's got a bigger plan. If we could look at it, when we're talking about Ruth in the field, God had a bigger plan. Yet at the time, it seemed like that she was living in chaos. Can I just describe to you a little bit about this? There was two men on the road to Emmaus. These two men had been disciples with Jesus. They're walking away. And as they're walking away from where they should have been headed to, they were in a dilemma. Jesus, who they had called God, had been hung on a tree, had been placed in a tomb, and they didn't hang him with dignity. They hang him naked. And they heard the words, no doubt, that he forgave his persecutors. He prayed for them. Just only, just only a day before, they had beaten him until he was unrecognizable as a human being. It only seemed just a light short time ago that they had sat with him. And they'd watched him, they'd watched him have the last communion. They'd watched all of the things take place. They'd, they'd seen him right off of the hill, off of a donkey. Now they just can't put it all together. You know, sometimes that's the way we feel. I just can't get it all together. I, I, I just can't, I just don't understand everything. The world's falling apart. Politics has fell apart. Sodom and Gomorrah is worse than I ever thought it would be. The news is not worth listening to. You get depressed just, just reading down through and how much worse can it be? What they're doing to our children, we don't have a choice anymore. We rode through a neighborhood last week and there was a sign that said, we've already got your children. I want to tell them they don't have our children. Amen. They don't have our children. And neither are they going to get our children. Amen. Brother Branham is speaking in modern events that are made clear by prophecy. It comes to an interesting point. And I think this is incredible. He said, he said, let's just listen to the words. Talking about Jesus quoting with them after he joins them. He said, let's just listen to the words that he quoted. I like these next words. He says, would you like to hear what he said to them? Would you like to hear what he said to them? I would like to say, yes, yes, I would. Here, Brother Branham, it's one thing for him to talk, take you back to the Garden of Eden and tell you what Eve looked like, and then, then maybe standing in a prayer line, look back 40 years in your life, and you know that's God, not the man. And now God's going to allow that to look back, to walk on a road with those two boys on the road to Emmaus and going home discouraged. And now he's not just going to talk to those two guys. He wants to talk to you as well. And he said uh, they were all briefed on the late happenings of, of the crucifixion. Of the story of the grave and the tomb. And he said they were, and the women that had seen him. And another one said they seen him and so forth. And they were all briefed on that. And he goes right on with the word about that. And he begins to quote himself in the word. He says, now, now let's look at Zechariah chapter 12. 
He must have quoted Zechariah 11 and 12, for he was sold for 30 pieces of silver. Was not the Messiah? Was not the Messiah supposed to be sold for 30 pieces of silver? In, in Psalms 41 and verse 9, he was betrayed by his friends. See? Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 7. He was forsaken by his disciples. He's taken him a journey through the word. Psalms 35 and verse 11. He was accused by false witnesses. Isaiah, as he begins to say this, he was dumb before his accusers. And he never opened his mouth. Isaiah 50 and verse 6. He was scourged. No doubt their minds were now beginning to pick some things up. Psalms 22 and verse 22. He cried at the cross, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? All my bones stare at me. They pierce my hands and my feet. Look at the prophecies that he could talk about. Isaiah 9 and 6, unto us a child is born. A virgin shall conceive and so forth. Psalms 22 and 18, they parted his garments among them. Isaiah 7 and verse 14, a virgin shall conceive. Psalms 22 and verse 7 and 8, they made, him, made a mockery by his enemies and supposed to be by his friends. Psalms 22 again, not a bone was broken, but they pierced his hands and his feet. Isaiah 53, he died with malefactors. Isaiah 53 and 9, he was bruised and buried with rich brothers. In Psalm 16 and verse 10, he was resurrected from the dead. And David said, I will not suffer mine holy one to see corruption. Neither will I leave his soul in hell. And he was raised from the dead. Malachi chapter 3, John the Baptist was the forerunner. All the types that he might have went through too. Even to Isaac being a type of him upon a mountain, upon a mountain where his father Abraham took him in Genesis chapter 22. And it was now that they began to see who had fulfilled these scriptures that was promised of that day. It was then, after it was late, begin to see, oh, well, wait a minute, you know, they, they then, then know that the crucifixion friend Jesus was the prophet was promised. They knew because, see, they, they hadn't been briefed on the scriptures. But here, I, all of these things that were supposed to happen at the cross and all of these, these things, fools, slow of heart to understand, all the prophets have said and how that the Messiah shall suffer and enter into his glory and raise him the third day. But still they don't recognize it. I think sometimes we don't recognize Jesus as walking with us. And they've had him with them all day. Six hours. He stepped from another dimension. I'd like to just pause here just for a moment. How must God must feel in that God realm, in that other realm, looking into our feeble humanity and doing his best to help us. I want you to think about that. In the busyness of all of his universe, he takes the time to come and spend a little time for these guys, it was six hours in an afternoon. But I want you to just notice, and if I can just capture this for a moment, in their journey, walking away discouraged and despondent, headed in the wrong direction, God didn't give up on them. 
in your journey, maybe headed in the opposite direction, your world falling apart, and you're walking and you're disillusioned and you're in a dilemma, God don't give up on you. Now these boys couldn't recognize who the guy was with them. Though they had heard him preach for maybe three years, they had seen incredible signs and wonders, but now in that realm of eternity, stepped into this realm of time, being God, now he wants to help his children because it's more than just about your natural journey. He knows where he's got to get you. Are you with me? These boys wasn't going to stay discouraged. But at the end of the day, they invited him in and even constrained him. Come in and have some bread with us. It's getting late. And they invited him in. And when he began to break the bread, they recognized who he was. Then their eyes was open. And when your eyes come open to who's been walking with you, Let me just say, it's very difficult to look forward and see the will of God. But it's easy to look back and see that you've been walking in the will of God all the time. It's easy to look back and see those prints, and there's only two prints in the sand where there should have been four. And he reminds you, I've been carrying you. I can say the last three years, he's been carrying me. Sometimes we have to come to a spot where these boys would come to. To see yourself as God sees you. If not, we'll become Catholic. And Catholics will beat. They'll never be worthy. They'll always be doing penance. They'll always not be doing enough. But being believers, you're adopted into the family of God as sons and daughters of God. And now God begins to walk with you and talk with you. And it's a daily journey. Never forget to pray. Never get too busy to pray. Never get too busy to fellowship with God. Are you with me? Brother Branham would use this statement. He said, my ministry is to declare that he is here. And if he is here, our prophet may have had to leave, but his job was done. Many of our loved ones had to leave because, but they didn't die without faith looking for the rapture. But we are here in our journey. And God has a purpose for us to be here. The scripture says that we which are alive and remain. So we've got a purpose in our life. Are you with me now? Could we realize just for a moment that we are in the season of rapture? I asked you last week, do you now believe? How many remember that that sermon? And I I spoke to you about when Lazarus was laying in the tomb and and Jesus asked Martha and Mary to, to roll away the stone. And when they really come to the spot of their life to where that they now identified so with him, It's when they put their hands on it. All the critics was against Jesus, but now the critics was against them as well. It's when you identify yourself with the word, then the critic comes your way. Now, we're in a season to where that we realize that it must be the angels of God holding back bombs, even against the United States. But they're, they're, they're holding them back, waiting for us to, to, to go home. But can you imagine when Noah was here, the critics was all around the ark. And they were all around the ark, and even till the very last day, criticizing Noah. 
even to when that they were locked up inside of the door and no doubt the critics were still there. But let me just say this issue, once it began to rain, once the billows began to open up, everybody became a believer. Everybody criticized Jesus. Critics at every meeting, critics that was there, even at his crucifixion. But that didn't stop there. Can you now imagine the difficulty of saying that you saw Jesus alive and well? Now the road to Emmaus, these boys experienced Jesus being with them. But now go tell your neighbor. Sure you did. But I'll tell you, he took me all the way through the scriptures. And this Jesus was the Messiah. The difficulty to get the critic to believe. Now your experience with God lined up with the word. You realize that you're walking in sacred moments. I want to take it a step further. We've heard the message of the hour. We're more than a church. We're more than a body of believers around the world. But two worlds are coming together. Not only is Sodom coming, but heaven is coming too. What we experience in services like this around the world It's God coming in our midst in a supernatural way, confirming his word over and over and over and over again. And you feel it sweep from the front to the back. Sometimes you see a cloud, sometimes maybe a pillar of fire, and you just witness, that's him. And whether you get a sensation or emotion whatsoever, you take him at his word. And you see the change in your life. You couldn't make that change. Well, Brother Ron, I can do better. I I can make a change in my life. Okay. January 1, you'll probably start a diet. January 5, you'll eat a donut. Enough said? But we realize that It's really not you, but it's what God deposited in you. And that which he deposited in you is God himself. So, Sister Chastity, we're not looking at our outward man. We're not looking at our weaknesses. We're not looking at our frailties. We're not even looking at our own excuses. If we could see what God sees on the inside of us. Oh, Brother Ron, is it you? Well, if it's not me, then who? If it's not now, then when? God's going to have a bride. I just choose to believe that I'm part of it. Well, Brother Ron, but but the difficulties I go through. Brother Charlie that's sitting in a wheelchair, been in a wheelchair since in his 50s, but God's been with him this whole time. You can choose to have the right attitude whatever you're going through. I could choose to crawl up in a cave and suffer from depression the rest of my life because of the death sentence by, by doctors and what everybody else thinks, but let me just say this to you. I choose to God's work. So I refuse to focus on what's in the mirror. I focus on the word of God. And I... Come on, church. Do you think there's not days where I feel like I can't get out of bed? I just start throwing one foot over top of the other and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. If God has called us to do a work, let's do the work. Let's respond to the attack of the enemy. 
we are commissioned to take the word of God and speak it across our lips. Whether you're a preacher, whether you're a singer, whether you sit in the back of the building, listen, when you go on your knees, you shake the kingdom of hell. There's not a more powerful people than you on the earth. But Satan knows what you're capable of. He just hopes you don't know what you're capable of. Can I preach to you? In this darkness, God chose you to live. You. Turn to your neighbor and say, God chose you. He chose you. Now, God's infinite in his mind. He don't make mistakes. He don't, he don't make junk. So quit putting yourself down. Quit living a life of regret. Sister Connie will eat a meal and she said, I wish I hadn't eaten all that. Don't live a life of regret. You enjoyed those potatoes. Enjoy it. Walk it off, baby. Walk it off. If I die this afternoon, you send flowers. So we realize that we're not here to live a a whiny. Feel sorry for me. I'm the only one going through this. How does Brother Jewel say it? Wowzy, wowzy. Let's say it again. You did good. Wowzy, wowzy. And he would say it, have that old mule face. Why don't you smile? Brighten up your face a little bit. Let me just say this. If you're worried about wrinkles, smile. It takes more muscles in your face to frown. If you look at your pictures and you never show your teeth, learn to smile. Realize today that we are his victory. So he called you in this day to be the victory over top of the enemy. He will anoint you for the challenge of the day. We're not waiting on another generation to come. He's got you on the scene. Are you with me now? I want to ask you, do you now believe we are his victory? We will see the resurrection. Now, I want you to just think just for a minute. Resurrection happens. Your loved ones walk through these doors or walk up to your house. Now go tell your neighbor. What's your neighbor going to say? Are you with me? Not everybody's going to be on the same page. But they are going to be a sign to you. In about 40 days, we're going to see Jesus. You think you're hearing noise now? Just wait till you start stepping into these dimensions. Just wait till you start stepping into these dimensions. The enemy that's tormenting you knows he's only got a couple days left to work on you. You'll take a half a step that way and they'll take a half a step this way. Still here? We'll be singing and dancing, rejoicing around because this word is more than words on a page or on a, on a tape recorder. But now we're living it. There came a time when Sarah and Abraham was listening to a baby cry. They wasn't looking for the vision to be fulfilled no more. They were living in it. (laughs) 
Let me just say, we're walking into it. We're stepping into it. There's a season that's going on here. It's when God's taking his great paintbrush and he's painting all the trees. It's going to be beautiful here in a few weeks. Millions of people will come through our valley to see our, our trees. We didn't do anything to make it happen. It was God that painted all that. It's God that did all of that work. Are you with me? It's because we're entering into a season. What's going on in the bride today around the world is we're entering into a season. Our expectation is a higher level. It's stepping into a realm to where that we can see what God has said that we were going to fulfill. Notice Brother Bram said the hour is here. If I'd have been back there before the days of, that the world was created and looked down and seen the whole thing, and the Father had said to me, what day would you want to live? I would say now. I would say right now, this is the hour. This is the greatest hour that the church has ever moved into. Just before the coming of the bridegroom. That's how special you are. He said, as I've said, God is like a great big contractor. He lays out all the material on the earth and then he builds his buildings. And remember before there was a grain of the seed on the earth before there was a sun that ever struck the earth. Your body was laying on the earth because you are the dust of the earth. God is a great contractor. I could stop there for a little bit. If you could just start appreciating how God built you, made you. It's pretty incredible. He made your hands. And all that you can do with your hands, the sensories that he give you. He made your eyes and just a glimpse you can have an incredible amount of information. He made your nose to where that you can smell good and bad. Made your senses of your taste to where you could enjoy food. Amen. He made you with emotions to where you could fall in love. Amen. I was just on the lake of of up near Elk Ridge, Waska Sioux, Anglin Lake. Anglin Lake's what I'm looking for. I got up early in the morning and I was walking and I'd felt rough through the night. And so I got up and I just began to walk and it was just like heaven. You couldn't hear any, couldn't hear any road noise. You couldn't hear planes going across. Leaves were turning yellow and they got a lot of la yellow leaves there. I walked right up on a great big old buck and I just stood there about from here to that tree and he just looked at me and he just stood there for a while and I took some pictures of him and he started eating and I started just kind of walking by him. He wasn't scared of me. And I thought for after a little while, one of these days I'm going to walk and I may see you again. And that day I'm going to walk up and hug your neck and I'm going to hold you and maybe look at your horns. I may walk down a little bit further and be a great big old lion there. He's, you know, he's not going to be scared of me then and and I'm not going to be scared of him. And I'm going to walk over and rub his mane a little while. And he's just going to purr for me. He's not going to be a meat eater no longer. He's not going to want to eat me. I'm too bony now. He, he, he's going to want to eat some grass in that dimension. I began to walk and I, I walked down to, the, to a dock and I walked out on the dock and it was two, there was a male and a female duck there, mallards. He was just kept, kept ducking in the water and ducking in the water and she was ducking in the water, ducking in the water. They didn't know time even existed. 
few days, they'll, they'll fly south. And I stood there and I began to lift my hands and begin to worship the Lord and begin to pray. Begin to thank him for what I'm thinking on this morning. You've been with me in the journey. You've been with me as I've walked through this journey. And I never want to come to the place to where I forget. It wasn't my human energies that have got me here. But it's God that has been with me all the way. Some would say it's a new lease on life. I just say this to you. God was rich in mercy. I came across this the other day, and I'll just share a couple of things about it. I was studying, and I was looking in some notes. And I found this. Andrew had shared it with me years ago. One day, Thomas Edison came home and gave a paper to his mother. And he told her, my teacher gave me this paper and told me to only give it to just to my mother. His mother's eyes filled were tearful as she read the letter out loud to her child. Your son is a genius. This school is too small for him. and doesn't have enough good teachers for training him. Please teach him yourself. After many, many years, after Edison's mother died, and he is now one of the greatest inventors of the century, One day he was looking through old family things and suddenly he saw a folded paper in the corner of the drawer of the desk and he took it and opened it and on the paper was written, your son is adult, he's mentally ill, we won't let him come to school anymore. (laughs) I want you to just think. The genius of the century. The school thought he was mentally ill. But there was a mother that thought he was a genius. I'd like to say I'm thankful to God that what people wanted to turn down, God looked at you and saw something much different than yourself. I shared that, that little story with my family on, on our, our, our family chat. And then I shared it on a minister's chat. I thought the timing was perfect. At the very moment that I shared it, Brother Danny Steeman was touring the home of Thomas Edison. He was walking through the museum in Fort Myers. When sometimes you think, oh, you're just having a normal day, you're actually orchestrated by Almighty God. A man would walk up before Brother Branham and say these words, speaking in tongues, and it would be three in French interpreters and called it perfect French. Because thou hast chosen the narrow path, the harder way. Thou hast walked in your own choosing. Thou hast picked the correct and precise decision. It is my way. Because of this momentous decision, a huge portion of heaven awaits thee. What a glorious decision that that thou hast made. This in itself, that which will give and make come to pass the tremendous victory in the love divine. You've heard that over and over again, but I'm going to tell you this. I worked for 11 years making nitroglycerin. And I read this poem every day because I had it on my locker. And people would walk by and say, does that mean something to you? I said, absolutely. I'm on a journey. And I would think in my heart, I won't always be making nitroglycerin. So where you're at in your journey may not look good for now, but just stick around. Keep walking. The scripture says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, 
to them who are they called according to his purpose for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And moreover, whom he did predestinate, they be also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Amen. Now let me just say this to you. God chose you when you couldn't choose yourself. Amen. God elected you when you couldn't elect yourself. The scripture also said that he called you and with an eternal calling, he can't lose you. The scripture says he's already justified you. And we realize there may be a lot of stuff against you in your life. And you may have a lot of it in your memory book. And Satan only uses your memory channel to confuse you, war with you. How many humans do we have in the building today? How many of you does the enemy remind you of yesterday's failures? Ten years ago failures? Hallelujah. Yeah, it looks like about 100% of you. Yeah. Well, you know why he does that? Because he's built to be the accuser of the brethren. But if you could see what God sees, he don't see it. So if you could begin to look back at your past the way God looks at your past, you never did it to begin with. Now I want to read you a very familiar portion of Scripture. After that is settled, what shall we then say to these things? I want you to read it. If God be for us, who can be against us? Let's do it again. It's Sunday morning. If God be for us, who can be against us? Don't waste a minute. Don't waste 10 minutes. Don't waste a day on your accuser. He's bringing up stuff that God don't even hold against you. But you hold it against yourself. I was counseling with a man and woman one time and they were constantly bringing up old girlfriends and old boyfriends and they were, they were they're not here. And they were just... Always makes it nicer, doesn't it? Who, who is it? Who is it in the church? Who is it? And they was constantly in. And I said, are, are you guys Christians? Yeah. Don't you realize that God forgives you? Yes. Yeah. Don't you realize that God justifies us as though you never did in the first place? Can't you see yourself as God sees you? Quit digging up bones. Quit digging up bones. Then quit digging up bones about yourself. What do I do then? Enjoy life. Let's say it again. If God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Don't you love it? Brother Bam said, I believe that the greatest battle that was ever fought is, is now ready to go into action. I believe God has been selecting his soldiers. I, be, I believe he's dressing them. He's training them. And the battlefront is now set, getting ready to start. He was talking about you. So God didn't bring you here to press against the darkness to see you lose. Did everybody get that? God didn't predestinate you. He didn't bring you to the earth. He didn't preserve your natural seed through all of these generations. Just to bring you to this point for you to go, I quit. I quit. I'm taking my coat off. I, I quit. I'm giving up. It's too hard a battle for me. Sure it is for you. I was actually hot, the reason I took the jacket off. 
But if you only look at you, you'll quit every day. But if you keep your eyes on the Word, are you with me? You've heard me say these words to you. Refuse to retreat. Never, 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 never give up. The song says, onward Christian soldiers. Are you with me now? Year of God, little children have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Think about that just for a moment. Now, God's words are eternal. His weapons are eternal. The weapons of his warfare will never fail. You heard that last night. So you have the power to bind and to loose. You are commissioned to speak. Not just speak with your authority, but speak with the authority of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to remind you, there's no higher authority than the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, I'll loose in heaven. Help me preach. So stop complaining. Stop whining. Refuse to give Satan any voice through your lips. Think victory. Talk victory. Walk victory. Never give up. I want you to say these words with me. Refuse to give Satan voice. Think victory. Talk victory. Walk victory. Never give up. Did you hear yourself say it? I want you to remind, remind you of something here. The reason that we sing and we come and sing is sometimes we come from the Walmarts of life. We come from different difficulties of life. We walk into church. The song leader gets up and he begins to sing. You know, you can just sit there and put your hands in your pocket and say, all right, sing a song that I like. I don't like them new songs. Sing an old song. And, you know, sing a song that I like. And I just want to be entertained this morning. Well, that's not the point. You fail to realize the point. The song leader gets inspired to sing certain songs. He prays about it. He gets himself ready. The musicians get ready. We're set in an atmosphere to bring us from the world. And now we begin to sing songs across our lips. Sing it loud enough to where your heart can hear it as well. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Satan, your kingdom's coming down. I say, Satan, your kingdom's coming down. I heard a voice from heaven say, Satan, your kingdom's coming down. Then you begin to sing your testimony. Satan, I'm going to bring your kingdom down. And maybe you got out of the car and you and your wife was having a tiff. tiff. Can you say tiff? That's a polite way to say it, tiff. And you get out and you slam the door of your car. And don't realize that Jesus has been walking with you. But he'll get you through it. And you get in the house of the Lord and you're there and now you need that song leader to do a little singing. And maybe just for you, he sings, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved. Then the singers begin to sing, and they sing from their heart. They prayed about the songs that they're going to sing. What you don't realize is we're at war here. We're a lighthouse set up on this hill. And we're keeping the flame hot. 
Why do I have to praise the Lord? You got to keep the flame hot. Now, in a few days, I want to remind you, it's going to get cold around here. Rain's going to turn to ice, and ice is going to turn to snow. And so in some of your houses, you got a stove. And that stove is created to to make heat. I was a chimney sweep for many, many years. And so what you do is you, you put it in, and you get it built just right. You light the fire. Now, if you don't light the fire, you can stand there all day long. That's what a lot of people do in church. They don't light the fire. And they go out colder than they walked in. But you got to light the fire. I'm preaching to you whether you know it or not. I'm preaching to you. At my house, you see, I was beginning to get weaker and weaker, and I fight weakness because of the chemo. And I asked Brother Davey, I said, what did you do? He got out of the wheelchair. What did you do to strengthen your body up? He said, well, I I cut wood. Well, I thought, well, if that worked for him, bless God. And I said, Lord, I ain't strong enough to roll logs together. But Lord, I, I need the answers of how to do it. So I had a dream. Roll three great big logs together. Take your skid steer and put logs laying this way. And then cut one at a time. And then roll them over and split them. I got a, I got a wood pile. Ain't that right? Sister Barbara drives by it every day. I got a wood pile. Because I wanted strength. It didn't work out well. But I got a wood pile. Now let me just say, I can leave it laying out there. Or I can bring it to the house of God. I can roll it in. I got myself a big roller cart, and I can roll that baby right up in my house. I got a ramp. I can roll it right up in my house. Are you expecting a cold winter? I don't know. Weathermen are 17% right. Don't believe them. But when it gets cold, I'm prepared. I'm prepared. Now, it takes a little work. But it pays off when you're sitting over in that lazy boy with Blondie. And you're sitting on two seats, sitting over with Blondie and enjoying that fire as it glows and enjoying the heat. Now, a lot of people don't understand on the internet of what we do here. We enjoy the benefits of the liberty of the Word of God. And so we come to church and you got to get in the Spirit. We're not here to be entertained. It's everybody at all hands on deck. If you're the amen or be the best amen. If you're the hand clapper, be the best hand clapper. If you're the singer, every one of us are the singers. Be the best singer that you can be. can get warm by the fire. Brother Ron, I don't like all that emotion. Well, if you was laying in the morgue, you'd like to have some. (laughs) 
Hallelujah. Now, I want you to just think just for a moment. And I want to take you through a journey. Is this all right? I've kind of be been bopped a little bit. But I want to take you through a journey. I stood with David Iberson in Belgium. And he took me to an old castle. And you know, those old castles, they look haunted, and there's a reason for it. This particular castle was, had held prisoners of believers. And there they would torment those believers. And at the end of their journey, they had a huge hole that went down into a cave that went to, the, to a river that carried out to the ocean. And they would slay those believers one by one. It was untold the tens of thousands of believers that went into that hole in Belgium. I think about their journey, and that's the way that it wound up. But I want to tell you what you couldn't see was Jesus was right there with every one of them. I was standing with Brother George Quinn, who will be here in a few weeks. And he wanted to take me to Columba's house, where Columba lived. And it was out in a pasture field overlooking a huge a township down there. And Columba would, would pray through the night. And as Columba would pray, he'd be a church age messenger, as he would pray, People came to witness the pillar of fire as it shined through the keyhole. And they would come, and it was over. It was literally hundreds of people would come to see that pillar of fire glow out through that keyhole. The next morning wasn't a luxurious house. It was, you couldn't set that piano in it. It had a place, it was a rock ledge where they laid skins and, and blankets there. To where that he slept on. But in the morning he would come out and he would stand on the side of that hill on a, on a certain rock. The Irish are very superstitious. And he would stand on that certain rock. And he would preach to the gospel. And people would gather at the bottom and hear Columba preach. Hallelujah. Let me just remind you of how powerful that he was. He cursed the snakes off of Ireland. He cursed the snakes off of Ireland because they were infested. And there's not a snake there today. These are powerful men that God allowed to live through the ages. There was a man that we know much of, Finney. Brother Brandon would talk about him. He said under, he spoke under such inspiration. He had been a lawyer and he, he knew he needed God. He knew he needed the Holy Ghost. And, and he was ashamed to get it. He was ashamed of what people would think of him. And one day he was down behind the office and he was down behind some bushes and he was praying. And two women walked by and he stood up ashamed. And he realized, I'm ashamed of Jesus Christ. I need this Holy Ghost where I'll never be ashamed. And he went back down and he began to pray. And God filled him with the Spirit of God. Let me just say, in the season of his life, in the moment of his journey, he would preach with such power until men would walk down the road five miles away and give their heart to the Lord. Are you with me now? The town of Rochester, New York is where he was preaching at. There was no crime policemen actually became barbershop quartets. Jails emptied. I'll tell you, that's what this nation needs. We don't need to defund the police situation. We don't need to tear down George Washington's statue. We need a Jesus to come on the scene with power and demonstration. Help it to live on this hill. A man named Moody. You, by now you picked up what I'm doing. I'm picking 
portions of people's lives. A man named Moody shook the earth, won 500 souls to Jesus Christ. He had a bad day because the town of Chicago burnt down one night. The night before he had preached and said, next week, next week I'm going to have an altar call. But he put it off. And after the fire burned everything up in Chicago, he went to Europe and was so depressed and said, I'll never preach again. And while in, while in Europe, he was sitting in a barber shop and a man was preparing to cut his hair. <laughs> and it was such an atmosphere on this man. It literally changed the whole barber shop. And they finally asked him, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm away from Chicago. I've come here. I'm not going to preach anymore. One of those guys was pretty sharp. He said, well, why don't you come down to our church and give us a testimony? Amen. Well, asking a preacher to give you a testimony is asking the impossible situation. It rekindled his fire. Amen. And he came back to America and shook America. What did he do? He decided, I'm not going to live in depression no more. And God reignited his life. Maybe you've heard of this man named Spurgeon. Spurgeon is called the Prince of Preachers. But as a young man, he didn't know whether he wanted to serve God or not serve God. And he was walking down the street with his friend. And lightning struck his friend and killed him. That day he decided the rest of my life is to serve God. What are you saying all these for? Don't sit on your laurels. Serve God with everything that is within you. Can I just go quickly? John Wesley preached 88,000 sermons. And he rode by horseback. Not by airplane, but by horseback. William Carey translated 42 versions of the Bible. 42 languages of the Bible. Not only that, he translated dictionaries. How much time did he have? Whatever time he had, he, he spent it for God. Peter Cartwright, which you'll be very familiar with, actually preached here in this area. Brother Branham talks about him. Talks about him in an interesting sermon called The Greatest Battle That's Ever Fought. I'll save this. I'll save the rest for next time. But Peter Cartwright was a man that, that he was a no good for a long time in his life. But finally, Peter Cartwright met God. Peter Cartwright had such passion in his life. <laughs> to which that he had went into a town. And Brother Branham will mention the story that there was a building that was there. It was an old church that was no longer being used. So he just went in and started cleaning the windows and cleaning the cobwebs. And a bully walks in. He happened to be the sheriff of the town. And he said, there can't be no meeting here. There can't be a meeting here until you first whip me. Peter Cartwright got down off of his ladder and he said, well, if that's what's next. He rolled his sleeves up and he whipped the town bully. What you don't realize is that man became the pastor of the church. Peter Cartwright was preaching in a meeting one night, and there's about 300 people there. <clears throat> Masses had gathered, and some guys walked in, and they was going to disrupt the service for him. 30 of them. Nobody else felt challenged to fight. So he walked right down, and he began to fight. You liked him, Brother Shannon. He walked right down, and he whipped one by one until 30 men were whipped. Brother Biscoe said, he came from the south. <laughs> they came back to service on Sunday morning, and none of the men after that kerfuss had took place, none of them felt led to preach. 
Well, he said, I'll preach. But he had been the man that whipped all those men. But I'll preach. And he preached a sermon called, The Gates of Hell Shall Not Prevail. And when he got done, the power of God fell. And they worshiped all, all day Sunday and all night Sunday night and all day Monday and all night Monday night and all day Tuesday and all day Tuesday night. And on Wednesday, they baptized 300 people. You've said a lot right here, Brother Ron. Let me just say this to you. You may be in a lot of issues in your life, but if Jesus is walking with you, whether it's on the road to Emmaus or meeting you in a cave or whatever your situation is, if you've got him walking with you, and God is looking from his realm and you're walking in this realm and can begin to see what God wants to do in your life, you've got a journey with the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Peter Cartwright was a journey with the king. John Wesley preaching 88,000 sermons was a journey with the king. However long you've been alive, you've been on a journey with the king. I want to ask you one question. What will you be remembered for? What will you be remembered for? I spent about a half an hour, and it seemed like an exercise in futility for a minute. But I talked about John Wesley and what he's remembered for and what Peter Cartwright's remembered for. And we could talk about the Hebrew children, what they're remembered for. But what will you be remembered for? And I close with this. I don't want to be remembered for a man that suffered with cancer. But I want to be remembered for a man that when he met cancer, he wasn't defeated by it. He called you to meet the challenge of the hour. Whatever challenge that you're facing, even today. Whether it's big or it's small, because every one of us look at things different. What one will look at something that's very small, others will look at at its giants. But God is with you in whatever difficulty you're facing. Let's give the Lord a hand. Let's stand to our feet this morning. You guys could sing. Could you sing that song one more time? Whitney? Whitney? Before they come, I, I want to just ask you. We walk into a building and we don't know what one another's facing. We really don't. Really don't know. We don't really know what's coming up. We don't know the situations that we'll go through. Don't take a day for granted. Someone asked me the other day, said, Ron, what have you learned in this three and a half hour journey, three and a half year journey? And I shared it with them. I want to share it with you today. I have found out what's really important. And there's a lot of stuff that's not important. Are you with me? There's a lot of stuff that's not important. God's number one. Number one. My family, spending time with my family. You say, well, Brother Ron, you've got cancer. But you may go before I do. 
I just have a name to mine. You may go. We may go this afternoon. Don't waste a day. Don't waste a day. Don't waste a service. Those boys were discouraged as they walked up that hill. They were leaving town. And they spent all afternoon not knowing who was walking with them. I'd like you to just thank God just for a moment before they sing. I'd like you to thank God. Thank you for walking with me. Thank you for walking with me. I'm sorry that I've let you down at times. But I want to be more observant. I want to be more sensitive. Lord Jesus, we bow our heads before you as we come to the conclusion of this service. Lord, no doubt our our thoughts were scattered in many directions. But Lord, we are always conscious that you're with us. We want to be aware that there's not a 24 hours that you are not there watching over our lives. The angels of God are encamped about us. But Lord, if there's anything that I could echo to this audience today is don't let us be consumed with stuff. Lord, help us to never, never feel consumed by this world and its nonsense and the darkness. But we've been called to be the light of this generation. I pray that you would bless this audience today. Lord, each and every visitor that has come, I pray that you touch their life. Minister to us in a supernatural way. We thank you today. We thank you. We stop to give you thanks. As Jesus would say at the prayer of Lazarus' tomb, thank you that you've heard our prayers. Amen and amen. God bless you, Andrew. God bless you. Just a shepherd boy without a shield, without a sword, fed up with a giant's voice, screaming curses to the Lord. I walked down that hill alone with a pocket full of river stones. But what the Philistine can see is what I had was more than me. See, on my own, I'm weak. Serving to the king, interpreting his crazy dreams. I won't worship mortal men, so they threw me in the lion's den. Vicious teeth were all I saw, just something came and shut their jaws. You couldn't find a scratch on me. In fact, that night I fell asleep. When morning came and shocked them all, Cause my God fights for me Oh, yes, he does I stumbled into the room With alabaster and my wounds I could feel their judging eyes As I knelt before the Christ I poured my oil upon his feet. I didn't care who saw me weep. I gave him all I had that day, and he should have sent me on my way. But instead, he lifted up my head, cause my God fight for me. He's my sheep. a giant 
in your way are you trapped and can't get out or are you staring down a lion's mouth can you stand before the lord or do you need to hit the floor it doesn't matter what you've done because the battle is already won so lift your voice with me and sing that my story here today what's a giant in your way are you trapped and can't get out or are you staring down a lion's mouth can you stand before the lord or do you need to hit the floor it doesn't matter what you've done because the battle is already your story here today and what's a giant in your way are you trapped and can't get out or are you staring down a lion's mouth can you stand before the lord or do you need to hit the floor it doesn't matter what you've done because the battle is already won so lift your voice with me and sing that my God fights for me. Oh yeah. So lift your voice with me and sing that my God fights for me. With one voice, he's my shield. He's my shield. The victories, the Lord, He's my shield, He's my sword. The victories, Lord, don't let our praise be. 
space Oh, come about in this place Oh, every heart you are transforming Oh, come and move You say, God, come fill this room. Fill my heart. Walk with me in my journey today. Amen. Kia see, Sister Cassie. 
Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Just tell them for me, I'm going up 
the heartache that life brings, the comforts and knowing that I should be gone. As God gives me grace, I'll run this Christian race until I see my Savior. I see him face to face. Dismissed in the name of the Lord. God richly bless you. Oh, I can take the pain, the heartache that life.